Our intent is to change the landscape of Jamaica, to put us on the map globally as we deserve to be. Our product is far more supreme than I see in other places where they have far less. So there's four towers of the wildlife and birds around the development, the swallowtail, the canary, the hummingbird, and the phoenix. Each tower has its own level of amenities in terms of gym, lounge areas, pool, cabanas, concierge, tennis courts, basketball courts, golf simulators, cigar bar, cafes, restaurants. In order to stabilize the construction, we drive concrete piles down into the ground to the tune of, this is 28 stories, 180 feet down below in order to stabilize the building. Now you know everywhere is developed. So why we don't have as a developed country? We should have something like Singapore, Dubai. I will do the first. Hello Throppers and welcome back to another real estate video. These are my favorite to make. And if this is your first time visiting, a special welcome to you. My name is Winthrop Wellington and here on my channel, I help you invest and move to Jamaica. And today we are at a special one, one that has never been done in Jamaica before. We are at the Pinnacle in Montego Bay. And if you haven't heard about this development, it is one for the record books. It is going to be the tallest buildings not only in Jamaica, but also in the Caribbean. There are four 28-story towers that are gonna be here overlooking this beautiful lagoon that's behind me. It is really on the forefront of luxury residential living in the world, as a matter of fact. And today I'm gonna to be sitting down with some of the key leadership in and on this project. I'm very excited to talk to them and learn more about the nitty gritty details of why they chose Montego Bay, why they chose Jamaica, as a matter of fact. Also learn about the elements of this development. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Enjoy the journey we're about to start together. I guess to start, if you could just introduce yourself and the position of this project. I'm Dominique Silvera. I am the sales and marketing leader for The Pinnacle here in Montego Bay, Jamaica. So I am originally from Jamaica. I was born in Kingston. Uh, I moved to Montego Bay um, probably in the 90s, which is probably dating me right now. Um, so yeah, and I was in Jamaica in tourism. And uh, 12 years ago, I moved actually to Barbados. I live on another island right now, so I commute between Barbados and Jamaica. Um, and I own Christie's International Real Estate in Barbados. How were you brought onto the project? How did you hear about the project? So uh, you're going to hear a lot about um, relationships. I think they always say uh, makes a huge difference. Um, and you will meet uh, on the journey with Thropex, you're going to meet Isia Madden, who is the architect uh, for the project. And her and I have been friends for the better part of 25 years. Uh, we worked on some opportunities together in St. Lucia. Um, she knows what I've been doing in Barbados with Christie's International Real Estate Barbados in terms of the luxury space. And she said to me, it was about 18 months ago, and she's like, Dominique, I have some clients. I'm working on this project. I really want you to meet them because I know that you're going to really take it to the next level for us. And I was like, OK, I'll, I'll come to Jamaica. You know, Jamaica is always home. Who doesn't want to go home? I feel like the developers, they could have done this anywhere. You know, they could have done this any Caribbean island, you know, and at the end of the day, they chose Jamaica. Why was it important for them to do this project here? When I met with them, when I came here to meet with them about the project, we took an afternoon with the developers because they've been in Jamaica for 18 years. They chose Jamaica because Jamaica is their home. Absolutely their home. Their children go to school here. They employ Jamaicans in their jobs, in their current businesses, and they've been doing business in Jamaica for the past 18 years. And so when I came here to meet with them, of course, you meet around the boardroom and you do, you know, all of the, the important things that you talk about, which are business. And uh, Mr. Yang Sen Lee, who is our um, chief executive officer of the LCH Development Group and the Pinnacle, um, he said, come to my home. We're going to have some tea. And I said, oh, OK, that sounds lovely. And the whole cultural experience of sitting on his back terrace and him making tea for us and talking about his journey 
his journey to Jamaica, as well as the rest of um, his partners in this business. And it was really about, um, first of all, they came to Jamaica with a dream. They have worked incredibly hard um, on that dream. And they said that, you know, in talking to him, he's like, I said, why are you doing this? And what is the, what is the feeling behind it? They said, you know, when, in Chinese culture, things go in dynasties, in generation. They don't do things for today. They do things for dynasties and years to come. And he's extremely spiritual where that is concerned. And he said, so I want to do something for Jamaica that's not here. I want to do something that is for the next generation that our children are going to look back at and know that this is what we have brought to Jamaica. We effected change in Jamaica. Sitting and just talking with him and, and about the philosophies of, of, you know, the fact that you started from very humble beginnings. You, just like any other Jamaican would have started at very humble beginnings. And they just worked extremely hard. They work as a family. They're very much family oriented in their culture. Um, and the, the, the community that they come from is an area called Fujian. And Fujian is about brotherhood. And so one of the companies that are within the group, you'll see that actually has done a lot of the construction around for other uh, developers is called Brothers Concept because they consider themselves a brotherhood. So the team that are together, they're a brotherhood about growing uh, Jamaica and making things, uh, beautiful things for Jamaican people like themselves, leaving their footprint here. So it was a lovely afternoon. It was not sitting on a boardroom. And Mr. Lee, uh, which you will meet along the way, he says, you, I'm not like your typical businessman. I don't want to talk on the boardroom table. I want to get to know people and their soul and what they're, they're about. He's very, very insightful where that's concerned. So the minute we had tea, I was like, okay, right, I'm on board. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring it back to the, the leadership team on this project. And I think that was like incredibly, incredibly important to highlight. And as impactful and innovative as a project is as a whole, I think there is a lot of innovation and firsts in the leadership and the operations of this project. And if you would, can you tell us about the leadership of the project? So one of the other extremely exciting opportunities with coming on board and, and being brought into the, the Pinnacle project is the formation of the executive team. Um, so as I said to you, I came to the Pinnacle project because their lead architect is Isia Madden, um, who is a personal friend of mine, and we've worked together on some other opportunities uh, in the past. Um, but what was more like telling to me as I saw things unfold, so it was me, and then it was Isia, and then it was our COO. Well, let me just stop. The three leaders are women. <laughs> First of all, this is Jamaica. Um, and let's start with our architect. She's a hugely successful, educated Howard University architect. And she has worked for the last 25 years all along the North Coast, working in capacities for major developments. But for them to put the faith in a woman, a woman of color, a black woman in Jamaica, um, to lead the project, many times, as I'm doing my sales and marketing pitch to people, they're like, so who's the architect? I'm like, well, it's Isia Madden. Yeah, I know, but who's the architect? I said, it's Isia Madden, you know? <laughs> and that comes, on. I, hey guys, I'm sorry. It has come from men who asked me the question, you know? And I'm like, what part don't you get that a woman can do this? And she, she's very much a woman in a man's world. And she'll speak to that, you know, in her career. And then for me, as being a woman who has run her own real estate company, but when I left Jamaica, you know, I always have been in senior positions, but I never was the top person at the helm. And, you know, to be at the top of the helm and to be driving the branding, the marketing, I named it down to the name. I was given the opportunity when they had other names and I'm like, I, no, I don't think those names are going to work. I, I'm going to workshop some names for you. And I got to name it and to see it all over the place. Now I'm like, you know, I feel extremely proud, but they trusted me, you know, and, in, and implicitly, like anytime we have our meetings with the directors, They'll look at me, Dominique, what do you think? And it's such, like, it's a huge thing when you're the woman in the room and they, they want to know what I think. They trust in my vision for their development. And then likewise, in June of this year, our COO, our chief operating officer, who had worked with the group already, she, she's a lawyer, she's an accomplished attorney, and she had been there on the legal side of things. She moved out from being in legals 
to actually operating the company. As I said, Mr. Lee says, I don't do business the way everybody else does. And I think he is a man of his word in everything that he does, starting with the leadership, with the three women who basically sit here and, and run the day to day and, and, and Isia is running the construction teams and she's the architect on site handling everything. So it's really an honor. And, and as Isia said, she goes, not only is it an honor to be given this brief to build this, but then to build it in my hometown, to be affecting that long-term generational change that we're talking about. There's Jamaican women at the helm of this as well. So it's so incredible, like on so many levels the impact that the three of you are going to have on little Jamaican girls growing up. I even think about Jamaicans who have gone abroad or are in school in college. The now it's just like, it changes their mindset. Like I was saying before, it just changes how people, even Jamaicans think about Jamaica. You know what? It is so important to the three of us. I would say I speak on behalf of Tanya and Isi and myself like being mentors for other young women, especially in this country, like I feel like we have a huge responsibility and I think it's really important that we continue to push that story forward. And really and truly like to see young women coming up about empowerment, I mean, that can really change the way society is in many ways because a lot of times women feel dis disenfranchised, like they don't know what their opportunity is after school. They don't know that they can be in a position of leadership it's really, it's almost a, you know, an imbalance. It's a very matriarchal society, but it's a very patriarchal society. Women run the homes and the grandmothers and they run the life in Jamaica, but then a lot of the very senior positions belong to men. Right now, today, we're gonna to have an opportunity to go on site and to see everything at literally the ground level and see what's to come before it's actually here, which I'm very excited to do. Can you walk us through the elements of the development as well as the different phases as we go along? Absolutely. So um, today we're going to take you on site in a little bit. We'll go walking with our architect and she will, she'll walk us through it as well at ground zero, where you're really going to see that the site has been made ready. We're going to see that our piles are moving in place and then we're going to begin the story very few short weeks. So when we walk on the site today, we'll walk through and you'll see there's, there's elements to the entire community, starting with what is closest to the road, which is a commercial center. So for when you're living in the pinnacle, you don't have to go too far to find your supermarket, your pharmacy, your ATM machine. We're working through that there's a commercial center that's going to serve the Pinnacle. The other part about the Pinnacle is that it's a residential resort. So there's a resort component of it. There is a investment component of it in that two of the towers you can buy into and live. It'll be rented for you when you're not there. And then there's a tower that's, I'm going to live here all the time. And then there's villas, I'm going to live here all the time. So it's a really mixed use in terms of who is, who's gonna be in the development. In terms of facilities and amenities, like each tower has its own level of amenities in terms of gym, lounge areas, pools, cabanas, concierge to handle their needs per the tower that they're in. And then there's shared things such as tennis courts and basketball courts, a center called the Mangrove Club, which is closer to the water where it'll have golf simulators and cigar bars and restaurants and cafes by the waterside. And we've talked about a lot of fine dining opportunities and luxury dining that is available to you within your development. Forget there's a spa as well. So all of this in this place that you live or this place that you own. And when you come into Jamaica, everything is at your fingertips. And then there's the hotel component. So you will have in Tower 4, which is our Phoenix Tower. So there's four towers and they're all named in homage of the wildlife and birds around the development. So it's the swallowtail, the canary, the hummingbird and the phoenix. Phoenix being the hotel tower. And basically that is going to be short term people that are coming and going. It's a hotel environment um, and, and they're experiencing life at the pinnacle. We have a mini marina that is got 15 boat slip. And so for some persons who are buying in the very elevated, the penthouse, the 28th floor, which is our 5,000 square foot villa in the sky, those come with a slip. Outside of that, we'll have boats that are with the development that we'll be taking people down to Doctor's Cave or on boat cruises that are part of the development that you can book in to be part of those, as well as there'll be slips available for people who on a first come first serve basis, if they have a boat and they want to book a dock, so they have a slip there for their boat. 
um, also for the community of Montego Bay. This is an environment where people are allowed to come in. The boating has become a thing in Montego Bay where people boat to Doctor's Cave. You could boat down to the Pinnacle and have some lunch and maybe live music on the dock side and get in your boat and go back home. I want to talk about a little bit about the, um, the first phase, but the offerings in the first phase. Okay. So the development is being done in phases. Um, and so it's, there's phase one construction and phase two. In phase one, we are going to have on offering the commercial center will be there. All of the amenities will be there in terms of the tennis courts, basketball courts, restaurants, golf simulator, marina. All of that is going to be done in phase one, along with the Swallowtail and the Canary, which are the first two towers. Swallowtail and Canary are on sale now. That is what we have the offering. And the Swallowtail is a the full residential tower. That's where you plan to live. And the Canary, that is where it's going to be managed by the resort. And basically, you buy into it. It's a freehold purchase. And then you have a specific amount of time that you use it. And other than that, the resort will rent it out for you. So our commitment in phase one of having the two towers up is that we have the amenities available for who has bought in there. Another beautiful feature that we are doing is that Phase two, which is the hummingbird and the phoenix, those are going to be erected one year from now so that the external works are done by the time in three years time when phase one moves in that you're not dealing with the big erection of the two buildings. So those two buildings will be up and there'll be internal work. So of course there will be some level of construction, but the big works would have been done by the time phase one moves in. Because we anticipate that, you know, the way in which it's been going, phase one is going to sell out very shortly. We're, we're, we're tracking beautifully the way we should or the way we didn't even anticipate we were going to track. <laughs> so um, we are definitely committed to getting the other two towers up. <music>
known for them. They're used to that kind of um, construction and buildings. So we went to Miami and we did all of the touring of all the different construction, high rise constructions that was happening in Miami at the time. This was like about three, four years ago. And it led to me designing, you know, their vision, creating, you know, what they wanted um, to evolve here in Montego Bay. I just kind of want to know like your your thought process in how you designed it. I mean, and there's just so many different elements of the design. Oh, it's been a long time dream for me to design a high rise building. I was very doubtful living in Montego Bay, Jamaica, where there are none. Of course, you know, economics play a big part of it. I spent a lot of time in Toronto and I remember always talking to my husband at the time when we were driving on the highway. So when am I going to ever be able to, you know, design something like that? It'd be very encouraging. And truthfully, when I look back at it, I think God has been preparing me for the past 23 years to do this, actually. At 26, I had the opportunity to work on the construction of Rio Hotel in 1999. I did my internship with Duncan Shops and I, I went off on my own, started my own little company in a little room underneath my parents' house. I served on the Marine Park board with a friend of mine. Her name was Jill Williams, she was older than me. And then she was friends with the Spanish consul that was here locally. And they told her that they needed an architect. And Mr. Rio came down and, you know, interviewed me. And that's where it all started. From then, I have worked on all the Rios and, and we're talking about like 500 rooms. I've had the opportunity to work with other hotels like Excellence in Trelawney. I mean, I've worked with Playa Resorts. We renovated the Ritz-Carlton into the Hyatt Ziva and Zillario. I've worked on the Half Moon. Right now, I am architect of record for the Princess Hotel in Hanover. Also, the Unico Hotel in Lilliput. So I've had the experience with large scale construction. So it was only befitting that, you know, I was given the opportunity to design the pinnacle. And my thought process all along was to have this epic project at, I would say, the bay of Montego Bay. I mean, the site is positioned in such a way. Entering Montego Bay from air or from sea, you will see the pinnacle. I maximized on that opportunity. And then I thought about, you know, obviously the feel of what it should look like from inside and out. And of course, we had to do our research with regards to trade winds coming in, the sun path, the environment and what it's like 24 hours, the different times of year. Typically, we have the, the northeast trade winds coming in every day, you know, daily between 11 and 2. Took that into consideration. I didn't want the buildings to look heavy. So I used a lot of glazing. The frame itself, it's concrete, but the exterior, we have floor to ceiling windows and doors. Every single unit has an awesome view. Every single unit has a lot of light because of the floor to ceiling windows and doors. Every unit has a really nice deep balcony, which encourages outdoor living experience the outdoor space. We are sitting right on the crisp cusp of the lagoons. It's a sanctuary. It's a protected area. The land that the project is on is not protected, but we're right on the edge. I had to kind of find the balance between both environments. You know, I mean, I didn't want to invade the lagoons. However, we wanted our clients and the users of the property to feel the serenity of the surroundings, which is there. Basically did a lot of research, took everything into consideration, said to ourselves, okay, we want to take the tourism product to a different level in this country. The product that we have, we have created, it's not here. You know, we want to break some barriers. We want to break that glass ceiling, you know? So that's our aim and we're on it. We're on it, definitely. What do you think the impact of this project is gonna have on Jamaica? but also the region, the Caribbean region. Our intent, the impact that we would like to see and we are gunning for this impact is, is to change the landscape of Jamaica, to put us on the map globally as we deserve to be. Our product is far more supreme than I see in other places where they have far less. 
why not shoot for the stars, get us out there for everybody to know our potential. Now I want to move a bit into, into the team. And I think that this cannot be overstated enough is the all female Jamaican leadership team. What does that mean to you as the lead architect on this oh project? My God. I tend not to think about that. I have three girls. I have three daughters and um, literally I stay in my lane. I stay in my lane, serve my community, serve my country, which I love very, very much. Set the examples for my daughters. Truthfully, this has been like a whirlwind experience for me. I mean, architecture has been my life. So in designing this was fun. I, I didn't think about, I'm making history and I didn't think about that at all. I think I'm a workaholic. I work hard. I enjoy what I do, which is the main thing. I think once someone enjoys what they do, it's easy. Later, we're going to have the opportunity to go to the site and, and walk it. Uh, what can we expect to see when we get there? Well, we're in the middle of Chinese New Year. And just like us Christians, the place closes down with Chinese. So it's kind of quiet. However, exciting times are ahead. The piles. Everybody has their own different construction system. I have all faith in the Chinese team to build this project. They prefabricated their piles in China and imported them here. So piles are basically part of the structure subterrain. It's columns in the ground. And in order to stabilize the construction, we drive concrete piles down into the ground to the tune of this is 28 stories. 180 feet down below in order to basically stabilize the building. They're like the roots of the building, like how trees have roots. So I kind of got a bit of a surprise today. We have Mr. Yang Seng, lead the developer for the Pinnacle. Pleasure to have you on the show. And thank you for taking the time to hang out with us today. Thank you for coming here. Absolutely, absolutely. I heard so much about this project in the newspapers, on the news. I heard so much about your team from all these different forums. And today I had the pleasure to meet two of your leadership team here. And we had an awesome conversation about really the story behind this and also your story of coming here 18 years ago and essentially you falling in love with Jamaica. And yeah, how did that happen? Mantika Bay, I lived here for 18 years and Mantika Bay is my home. And then I found it so beautiful here. Mm -hmm. And you know, China have a very good um, background on developing a country. And now, you know, everywhere is developed. So why we don't have you know, as a developed company, a country, we should have something like Singapore, here, Dubai. I will do the first. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And other people, I, I'm sure they will follow up. Yes, yes, you're definitely leading the way in a big, big, huge way. And there's just so many elements of inspiration that I heard today and sitting down with the team. And then now, like we're actually here on site it looks magnificent. Definitely had to have some vision <laughs> to be able to put what you're doing here. Yeah, if you can just uh, guide us, where is this going, where is that going, and that sort of thing. Sure, I mean, it's, yeah, she's the architect. Maybe we should let her give a little bit of her story and vision here too. Okay, well, here we are, where we're actually standing, very close to the end of tower number four, which will be our most luxurious tower. Towers are literally stacked at a, in a northeast direction, which is facing that way and adjacent to each other. So we're at tower four, where the um, weights are, could be tower three, you know, going forward to where the piles are located, tower two and tower one, so forth. Towards the road, that's where we'll have our commercial zone with our supermarket, our retail space. And then towards the end, we'll have our mini marina for you know our residents to park their boats. 
And we'll also have, where we have the viewing tower, we'll have our fine dining restaurant, five stories high. Each floor would have a different gastronomic experience. We'll have a membership club. On the northeastern side of the site, we'll have our the mangrove spa. All along this shoreline, we'll have 15 luxury villas, three bedroom and four bedrooms. And this will be, you'll be overlooking the bay? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have to keep the mangroves, of course. We are environmentally friendly. We have to adhere um, to all the environmental requirements. We have to keep the mangroves. Um, which is a protected species, plant species here in Jamaica. And really part of our environmental plan. We mm -hmm. consider ourselves guardians of the environment and of the, of the mangroves and are working very fastidiously with um, the professionals, the doctors of environment yeah. that are working with us to make sure that we protect our environment. It's very important to our developers and to us. Amazing, that's awesome. And I know we're walking to the is it observation deck? Observation is that... deck. Yes, that's it. It's the observation deck. Okay. And then this will give us a height of... Third what? floor. Third floor. Okay. We're 28 stories high. Um, so this, when we get to the top of the observation deck, you're actually at the third story, which is really the beginning of our residential. Ta stories one and two are your ground floor lobby. Two is your guest amenities floor. And three is where our residences and apartments start. So. Whether you're at the third floor or the 28th floor, you're still going to see an amazing view of Montego Bay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. No, this is great. And I also think <laughs> like the, the, the location with the road networks is like extremely strategic. When you knew you picked this spot, did you understand or did you know that the expansion of the road network was going to coincide with this location? Um, before that, we never know the highway going to bypass here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, right here is very convenient for accessing. We have, we have, you can access by highway and you can access by water taxi mm -hmm. from Mini Marina. And also we have heli park where you can land in. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> So we, the, the location, when you, Mr. Lee said it uh, at our launch in his speech, he's like he would drive past this location all the time and wonder, you know, what a beautiful spot. How is, you know, how is he going to uh, maybe know one day that it would be something that they would develop? It just, it was a uh, kismet. Mm, mm, okay, I see, I see. Yeah, we, we will have a small, you know, um, hospital nearby. And then, of course, the health part is very important. To mm -hmm. You know, um, Montego Bay is a tourism capital, and just in case you know people need it, those service, and then they can have a helipad straight flight to Miami or any other. And see. that's very important for the diaspora buyers or potentially people who are in that mid part of their life. One of the reasons they are thinking of Jamaica, they're like, you know, what is what are my health options? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure accessibility to the first world is here and available, as well as a you know, a center where they can get immediate care before if they have to leave. No, I think that's great thinking. And I can tell you from m the perspective of my community, it's mostly an older demographic. Uh, more than half my audience is 55 and older, and most of them are part of the diaspora, but they want to come home and they want to live here again. But first thing is safety. And then after that is like their health care and having access to quality health care and having access to like you said, if you need to get to Miami for treatment that you can't get here, can you do that quickly? And uh, I think that's a huge selling point, uh, being a Montego Bay alone, but then having the helipad. And then if you need to, you know, get to the pri a private jet or something like that, you can do and that away. right yeah, there. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and, and for insecurity in terms of features as well, we have many features within the towers where even there's obviously going to be security at the gates, there's manned security, but we have electronic security systems as well. And even in your tower, your limit, your movement between floors. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the 10th floor, your accessibility is to your 10th floor, ah. our seventh floor, which is the guest amenities floor, your second floor, which is your gym, and your ground floor, which is your entrance, but you can't move between floors. I see. You know, so that's an added layer of protection that people aren't just roaming around the building. You're dealing with a density of people, 141 units in the building. So we really thought through what is life going to be like at the pinnacle mm -hmm. for our clients. 
And we didn't get to this earlier, but I'm curious, like, who is this for? Who, like, the clientele and who are you going after? Well, first of all, it's for Jamaica. You know, we, we st you know, and I said to you, I don't know if I mentioned, is that from our, our launch, our uptake has been a lot of Jamaicans who are very interested in a lifestyle proposition or a, a second home or maybe a first home or maybe they're downsizing and want to go into something that offers services. So Jamaica first, this is for Jamaica, and then for our Jamaicans who are away in the mm. diaspora, who want a reason to come home, who want it easy, turnkey. When I'm not there, it's being managed, you know? So we really took into consideration them, of course, and for people that are new to Jamaica and want to just experience life in Jamaica beyond their holidays. They've been coming here for years on end and just didn't know how they could transition into life in Jamaica. So we're really reaching out to anybody. <laughs> But we start with Jamaicans, our diaspora, our, of course, our low-hanging fruit, and anybody who wants to live in Jamaica. Awesome. Anybody who loves Jamaica, like Jamaica, one count Jamaica, we are welcome. Yeah, amazing. welcome everybody. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th I really think this is going to open, yes, the market up in a way like never before. But I also think, as uh, we were talking about earlier today, that this is going to change the mindset of, of how people look at Jamaica, how people think of Jamaica. Not only like from just say people like, you know, to think one love, Bob Marley, great food, all those amazing and things. And thinking a lot about that right now. Right, right, with the movie and everything. But like from an investment standpoint now, they were like, wow there we're having the tallest building in building excuse me in the caribbean and you begin to think as an investor like why didn't they do it in mexico why didn't they do it in the dominican republic so there has to be something about jamaica for an investment of this magnitude it just speaks a lot to the confidence of jamaica and the people here and i don't think that can be understated absolutely i think you're 100 percent right okay. you know um, and we are really proud to be the ones bringing it to Jamaica under Mr. Lee and the directors of LCH's vision. Uh, Isia had the opportunity and, and so have I to really bring it to life and that's been a great part of the journey. Awesome, awesome. Very exciting times for Jamaica, trust me, trust me. Yeah, I guess. Okay, let's go. Let's go up. Okay. <laughs> let's do let's it. go have a look. Kunse <laughs> Mini is a place which is, uh, has a great energy to help you out. That's why we call naturally the best address in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> We will and we have to do this again. You know, I mean, I feel like there's so much more to tell here and I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for your team. Thank you, Winthrop. Thank you, Thank you so, Thank much, you so much, for much for being for here with us today and really taking the time to get to know us. Yes. Soon these piles will be hundreds of feet down in the earth beneath us, holding up 28 stories of building for you to live and visit. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. I know I sure did. And it was such a pleasure learning so much about not only what this means to Jamaica, but also what this is gonna mean for this entire region. If you got any value out of this video today, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps out a ton. And of course that like button helps out a ton as well. I will see you all in the next one. Peace. Hey everyone, Throp here one more time. If you are at all interested in getting more information on The Pinnacle, are looking to invest in The Pinnacle, you can reach out to them directly at sales at thepinnaclejamaica.com or you can give them a call at 876-971-Quadruple-8. Make sure you tell them Throp sent you. I hope you find what you're looking for.